All right, so I thought I'd do a, a little video here on determining ownership of uh, high pressure gas bottles. So we've got a few bottles here that we're gonna take a look at and uh, go through them and figure out which ones are customer owned bottles and which ones are lease bottles. So we're gonna start off with a couple of lease bottles, I guess. So we'll just take the, the flashlight here and we'll take a look. So these two bottles here are lease bottles and you can take a look at them and start inspecting to see what you can figure out. So you'll see on the, the collar it has air liquid on it. That's really not significant. They just put collars on bottles uh, when they are put together. But what you may or may not be able to see right there in the center is ALS. Now air liquid paints their bottles really nicely so it's hard to tell. Sometimes it was marked on them, but that's uh, a lease bottle it has ALS on it. That's the uh, test date on it, so it's uh, expired for a while now. So that's an oxygen bottle there. This is an acetylene bottle. Now to get an acetylene bottle this big, it's not a lease bottle, is very hard to do. I don't have any examples of those, but if you look on it, it has ALS stamped on it. So that tells you that it's a, a lease bottle. Now you're gonna go to a lot of places, sorry, just wait for the camera to focus, and they're gonna tell you, you can't get a bottle this big that's customer owned, and that is not true. Normally they say that's the biggest bottle you can get that's a customer owned bottle, but I've got a few uh, large bottles. They're not all at this location. We'll see if I do uh, an additional work at the shop I'm working out of or not, but this bottle is actually uh, kind of interesting. So it's like a super high pressure bottle. I don't know if we can read the reading on it on the back or not, but it's pretty high, right? 3600 PSI, I think. Whereas most of them are around uh, 2000 PSI. So this freaking thing is like a cannonball. There's probably just a one inch diameter void in the middle of it but this is my bottle I bought this I have paperwork for it I don't know what it came out of but the place that was selling them had several of them and there's no insignias on them for uh, declaring ownership they could have come off of uh, a boat or what have you I don't recognize the uh, paint job on this bottle but uh, that one is mine and uh, Sadly, it's also out of date. And I noticed that they didn't put the star on it when they did the last inspection, which is a bit concerning. I have to wonder if it's coming to a, the end of its life because they, normally if they put a star on it, it's good for 10 years. So uh, we'll see if this one passes or not. I had them stamp COC on this for customer owned container or COP, customer owned product. You'll see that on some tanks, but uh, well, it's not absolutely necessary to have that. So, uh, one out of three here is an own bottle. We'll take a look at these bottles here. I just picked these up at the dump today, actually. It seems like it's been dropped. So you'll look at this. Typically a B tank is a customer owned bottle, but you'll take a look for it. This is a, it says Prax Air on it, but it could be any of their old successor companies or legacy companies. But uh, there's nothing really on here. You could take this to TSC or pretty much anywhere and just swap this bottle, which is what I'm going to be doing because it uh, looks like it might have been done in 90 and never done afterwards. So it's no good. And don't play around with the acetylene bottles. They're packed full of asbestos, so just don't bother cutting them open. You can make wind chimes out of some things, but not. don't open one of those. Now here we've got a, a little baby tank here. I got this one at the dump as well. So I was taking a look at it. So it's like a 2000 PSI bottle. It's done in 84 and 93 with a plus. I think the plus lets you get a little bit more pressure in it. And uh, so this is a, an owned bottle, owned by myself now. So I'm just gonna bring this in and swap it so I can get uh, something. One thing you can do is these have a value on their own. So if you wanted to get one like larger tank, 
you could take in a couple old tanks here and swap them out. So that's what I've done in the past. So here is a CO2 tank. Another dump find. So these ones you need to be careful with because nine times out of ten these are uh, lease bottles. But uh, we'll just take a look around. It says TW26, so that's just like, the model number on it. Remember looking these up a little bit. They're lower pressure, right? 1800 PSI. So as bottles get older, you can kind of retire them for carbon dioxide duty if you want to reduce the pressure. So there's uh, nothing on this other than it was in service or tested regularly for the most part. So that's an own bottle. I had uh, a second one of these and I had like a, a two pound one. It looked like a fire extinguisher almost for Argon and uh, it didn't have any markings on it so I switched uh, the uh, CO2 bottle and the baby Argon bottle and the dealer gave me one of these in exchange like straight up. So this one here is a little bit deceiving when you look at it. I had to think about it for a minute to figure out his history actually. <laughs> because it's been sitting around for a while. But uh, this one again, it's got Prax Air on the neck of it, but this is a, a customer owned bottle. They don't have any of their names on it. So that's uh, one of mine. So with this tank here, I know it's gonna be trouble when I go to fill it. For one, it's expired. And when you send them away to get them uh, retested, they can go away for like a couple of months. They just put like a little sticker on it like this and it gets shipped off to the wilderness and a couple of months later it comes back. So owning one of these bottles is a bit of a headache due to that. Plus this thing is so heavy, I gotta tie a rope around it and drag it, I can't carry it. It's just ridiculous, it, it weighs like twice as much as me. I have uh, another blue bottle like this, that's a customer owned bottle. And uh, you can tell that, like I think it says Buffalo or something on the neck of it. But again, there's no insignias or anything on this area of the bottle to say it is uh, someone else's property. So really, if you see these bottles, I always tend to grab them and figure out what's going on later with them. Just make sure that they're safe when you're transporting them. These little baby ones, you can't put collars on the tops of them to protect them so that's a bit annoying and to bring them home you could try to try to swap them with somebody if you know someone that's got a garage they might let you do that but some of the newer places uh, they track bottles and it's a bit of a pain in the butt so uh, do what you can and uh, these ones are neat because you can just swap them at TSC you don't need to get it refilled you don't need to worry about the dates on it or anything like that they just take them and there's no cost to you to when they expire, you don't need to send them back or anything. You just, when it's empty, give it back and get another one. The propane bottles, uh, I guess that's more for beer and beverages and whatnot, but uh, I don't use it too much. I've got that for like, if you're off-roading, you can fill up a tire. I've got a regulator for that, but it's a fairly dense gas, so it's not good for having in your tires long-term, so, but it's uh, quicker than having an air compressor. So you got that option, and uh, I guess we'll uh, wrap it up here for the day. But So the truth is that you can get large bottles. I'm going to say it again. You just have to be very careful when you look at them. And uh, try to get some paperwork with it if you buy it from somebody. I have a uh, Ansel, like a 100-pound fire extinguisher. And it's got a giant bottle like this, or well, the red one on it, full of nitrogen. And again, it's my bottle. Like the uh, welding bottle places don't lease bottles for fire extinguishers. And it has a giant nitrogen bottle on it for blowing out the baking soda. So again, it's quite possible to get these. They're pretty popular in uh, fire suppression systems. They'll have CO2 bottles like at work. We have them manifolded together and you have like 30 of these bottles all joined together and they all belong to the place that I work for. They're not lease bottles. 
and you just send them away and get them uh, tested. So uh, they're out there if you uh, hunt around long enough. If you're going to get lease bottles, be careful with them. Like somebody, I don't know the full story on these bottles, but somebody is paying for them. I don't know who. I've picked uh, up a pair at the dump. And then if they disappear and you're leasing them, they can get you for like the 100 years of value of the lease on the bottles. So uh, keep them locked up. It's not ideal to have them in the shed. If the fire department sees these here in the video, they'll probably let my shed burn down. But uh, that's sadly the, the way it's going to have to be. Because uh, you need to mark your shed saying that there's uh, high pressure tanks inside of it. it should have a placard on your door or something like that. So they don't go in there. Not that they're going to run in to save a burning shed. But if it's inside of your garage of your home. They, uh, that could create some problems, so I wouldn't keep them inside of the garage of a house. Keep them outside in the shed so that uh, they can let her burn down. Anyway, thank you for watching. Alright, so I just wanted to do a follow up on my uh, first part of this video where I was showing the different bottles, whether they release or own bottles. So this here is a 100 pound Ansel fire extinguisher that I purchased. You can read up about these on the internet, but basically what you'll see on these bottles is that they say Ansel on them. If you go onto their website, they say that they're not theirs, that they belong to you, and to take them to a, a bulk station to get them uh, recertified when the time comes. So this bottle was only ever done once from what I remember. Yeah, so it's got a 92 a plus and a star, so it's plus for pressure, star for 10 years. So it's never been used, so as a result, it's never been refilled. So uh, I got this for a fairly good price from a collector. And uh, haven't gotten around to separating the nitrogen bottle from it. But that's uh, something I may do in the future, depending on what I do. When you send them away, you just get a new valve put on. For the cost of the recertification, they put on a new valve. You just tell them what CGA fitting you want, whether you want uh, another Ansel fitting on it or if you want a 580 or a 570 or whatever you want. It's not a big deal. So go walk over to my other bottles that I got here. So you can show uh, a couple of lease bottles. So this one here, it's got BOC written on it, like stamped into it. And it's on the neck. The neck part doesn't really matter other than I don't think BOC or Lindy sell bottles this large. This one here says uh, property of uh, Liquid Carbonic Company of Canada Limited. That's what that stands for. So I found these two bottles at the dump. I was able to convince the company to refill the uh, oxygen bottle for me before it expired so I was pretty happy with that. Then I got this uh, little guy here, it's an own bottle. I got that in exchange for the uh, used up uh, carbon dioxide bottle and the other little fire extinguisher size bottle. This one here has uh, a company name on it. I think it's a wall. I looked them up and they had been purchased but uh, did a bit of investigating and even though it says WCCL on it, it's not an, a lease bottle. So I sent this away to the uh, Lindy shop and they were able to uh, redo it for me, like get uh, a new stamp on it. So that was in 2015 I got a plus and a star on it. So uh, got a few more years left in this one. This one here is a lease bottle. It's got ALS on it, so that's air liquid. A bit easier to read than the uh, red oxygen bottle I showed you earlier. So that's uh, a lease bottle. I gotta find a solution for that. Uh, either get rid of it or trade it with somebody or what have you. So I just wanted to show you again that you can get uh, full size bottles that you can get refilled. Uh, this one and the Ansel I was able to do. This uh, the acetylene bottle, unfortunately, you can't really get it refilled, and it's. The uh, plugs on the bottom are starting to rust out, so it's not going to last forever anyway. It's pretty old. It hasn't been done in a long time. 
that one's pretty fresh. And then this one uh, expired since I got it done. So anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully between this and the original part, you'll be able to uh, understand some of the rules around these bottles. And uh, if you see a bottle that says ASME on it, that would be uh, done for life. You'll see them on propane bottles on RVs if they're like an underslung tank. We have them at work as well as part of uh, ignition oil systems and whatnot. So the ASME bottle has like uh, a clover leaf on it. But these are all like DOT, Department of Transport or Transport Canada bottles and they have to be redone on a, a certain frequency. So thank you for watching.